Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Wednesday, January the 19th, 2022. The NASDAQ continues to follow current analysis pretty closely, except there might be one little hiccup that I want to go over today and what that hiccup does possibly suggest. So just to do a quick review, we are continuing to track the pro progress of a minor wave C within an ongoing intermediate degree fourth wave correction. So within the C wave, which will consist of five waves of minute degree, we have minute one, minute two. So we're within minute wave three as it progresses down towards support. Now, today, our, I had been counting this as possibly the <clears throat> wave, the internal wave one of three, two of three, and that would make this three of three. And then this would be four of three, except four of three overlaps substantially one of three. So that negated that count. So what really starts to happen is that this would be one, two, and then three, four, five of one instead of this being one of C, excuse me, one of three, this becomes one of three. And if that's the case, this is two of three and we are now just beginning to drop in a three of three move. And I'm telling you, <clears throat> when I look at this, it fits a little bit cleaner. When we're dropping into a third wave, we got it, but then we got a lot of crap going on here. And it just shouldn't, within that third wave, and then in the three of three type move, no. So I'm more or less likely going to make this wave one of three, wave two of three, and now we're in that three of three move. And what does that suggest for us? It would suggest basically right off the bat that we're going to come down here, or at least definitely to here, all within the three of three move. Instead of this area completing that C wave possibly, it looks like now it may only contain the third or the three of three move. And then we get a four and then a five. And so we're looking for the possibility of this next lower level to complete minute three coming down into here possibly. And then we get a minute four and then we get a minute five that'll bring us back down into here. Here's the 50% level for that intermediate fourth wave as we have been discussing. That would be pretty good spot for it to go. Uh, if it's going to exceed 382, 50 is the next most common. And within the position on the larger charts, that's where I feel it needs to hold. Although we do have that intermediate first wave down below 13,000, I don't necessarily want to see this be dropping too much lower than here and still consider it uh, an intermediate fourth wave. So what can we look for? If this is indeed now what is the, the count, what that is suggesting is that we're going to start to accelerate pretty much, it's going to feel relentless. It should be strong. It should break below 15,000 without any problems and break below 14,946. Now, I just want to take a quick check of the daily chart. Something I want to check on there, which may get in the way, and look at that. Here we have the daily 200 moving average at 14,957. If this starts to accelerate, it should then pick up steam if it breaks below this 200. If it clears it and keeps going, what's that do? It brings out another round of acceleration. It's another sell signal. And so you're going to pull in a lot more 
uh, orders to get out of positions. So I would look for that. Again, 14,957, the 200 moving average on the daily chart. Back to that hourly chart. So we now need to keep that in mind because that would break and then we likely accelerate down to 14,947-ish, ultimately ending up down here. But this may just contain the third wave. So again, that's gonna be a pretty steep move, but let's just look at that in terms of where we are on the possibilities within the Elliott count. Remember, third waves. When you get into a three or three move, that's definitively where I would be looking for strong acceleration in the direction of the impulse and the impulse is down. So I'm gonna be looking for downside acceleration. I'm gonna be looking for it to break below initially that daily 200 moving average. On this particular chart, on the hourly chart, we are fairly aligned. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Aye. Drives me crazy, my computer. I, you can see there's the 200, there's the 50, there's the 20, there's the eight, and there's the four, and they're all pointing pretty strongly down. That supports on the 30, and also if we go back out to the hourly, it supports the decline, picking up some speed and really beginning to fall. It is all lined up on the hourly. And it would totally be lined up on that daily if it broke. And then we started to see the other moving averages start to drop and drift and drop below the 200 on that daily chart. That's going to accentuate the negativity on a chart, the technical negativity on the chart. Now, what can we expect? Again, we, were, we would be in a one, a two, we're in that three of three. I'd be looking for it to come down, start breaking below. Rallies should be thin and I'm not, not so much thin, excuse me for saying thin. They should be shallow as the decline continues to pick up speed. The downside pressure should overwhelm any buying attempts. They will exist as they did today. And we may see it initially tomorrow. But again, we still have Globex, we've got Asian markets, we've got European markets that they're gonna trade their markets and then also contribute what they believe is happening here in the US. And that could bring about another strong downside move. We did see it yesterday at the beginning of the Globex session, uh, about an hour or two into it, we did get some acceleration and they brought it down below that 15,078 number. And it came in the comp down there, which was great because it just gives more uh, support to the decline continuing. And we got a decent rally back up. In fact, it, they took it up quite a bit. They took it up 300 points off the low between Globex and US sessions. So, I'm going to be looking for continued tuition to the downside. Rallies notwithstanding should be shallow. As the downside continues, we have support. Again, 200 moving average on the daily, 14,956. Then we have 14,947, 14,825. And then we're coming in. See the kind of black hole? So again, breaking these could bring some serious rounds of acceleration. Look how far we got to go. I'm on an hourly chart. There's nothing. We got to go back pretty far to start to find the last time it was trading in this area. So I'm fairly, fairly convinced we're going to break 15,000. So that's going to be adding some pressure. And then that's the area I'm looking at. And again, if this is just going to be where minute wave three finishes, we are looking at this area to complete the five wave decline and put us into position to 
possibly can put a completion point to that intermediate wave four. Now, also at this juncture, I need to include that if we have to go back to where we have labeled the intermediate third wave, which is at the all time high for the NASDAQ at 16,768, if that needs to change to be the end point for all of the advancing sequences, this market is cooked. We would be in that initial intermediate degree decline, but it's not gonna be a wave four, it's likely going to be an A wave of an intermediate degree. And that would put the kibosh on running back up and getting to new all time highs before all of the fun starts to the downside. So, again, tomorrow, I'm looking for additional downside. I'm looking for it to begin to accelerate. If indeed we're falling into the three of three move from this level, I'm looking for it to come down to start breaking below 15,000 to start breaking below the daily 200 moving average and these support levels and find its initial support to rest, maybe stop, take its breath down here, 14,500 from current close, 500 point drop. NASDAQ can do it, we've seen it. So let's see, that's where I'm gonna complete it for today. Continue to trade smart, continue to trade using your moving averages, as I said, they're lining up. They're lining up pretty clear, clearly for a continuation to the downside. So that suggests that rallies are going to be held below the eight and the 20. That's how I use those moving averages when we're in a, a stronger decline, that a pullback should be held below the 20 at this juncture. If that sell pressure is strong enough, it should be held well below those levels. All right. So continue to use those moving averages as your guide. Use the Fibonacci support levels as either a pause or a turn point for a small rally or a pullback, and then a continuation. And then finally, add that Elliott wave count to guide you as to where we are in that larger picture. Okay, next update, Thursday, January the 20th.